Well, what an absolutely beautiful day it is today. You know, I'm here at this location, which I'm gonna show you through how I shot some images here in a minute. But, you know, it's, it's morning smoker. I've got to have a coffee and I've got my favorite dish. You know what? You didn't know this about me, did you? But I love rum balls. So there we have it. I've got my coffee and my rum ball. What else could you want? It's an absolutely beautiful day today. The sun is shining. Uh, it's cool, but beautiful. And when I show you this location here in a minute, you're going to love it. But first things first, let's get into this coffee. Alrighty, well, while I finish this coffee off, I'm going to show you this gorgeous location over here behind me. It's an old church, beautiful old stone church, St. Martin's, and this is a little community called Muskery. How many people live in Muskery? I don't know, but not many. There's hardly any houses anywhere around here. Anyway, let's go and have a look and I'll show you around. Now, this is one of the most beautiful buildings in the district. Have a look at it. It's just set up here on a hill out in the middle of crop country. So obviously they run the church here for the farming community. Uh, and I notice on the sign there's a service once every weekend. So they're still um, being used, this, this building. But it is pretty old. I don't know the full history of the place. But I came here a little while ago to shoot this beautiful building under the stars. And today, I'm gonna to show you around the various angles and the way that I put those shots together. So, firstly, I wanna show you the building. Let's go and have a look. Well, it says here this stone was blessed in 1976, but this stone is the newest part of this building, I can tell you that. Everything else is far older than 1976. Isn't it just beautiful? You know, as I've mentioned to you many times before, the first thing that I will do when scouting out a location such as this is work out Firstly, the lay of the land, which is why I always come in the daylight before I get there at night time, just to have a look around and see where all the um, pathways are, see where there might be any dangers, or tripping hazards, barbed wire fences, you name it. There's all sorts of things like that laying around. Then the other thing I do is work out my direction to get my shot and find the open sky areas so I can get the Milky Way over the top. Now, in this case, when I came here, I decided that there was a fairly big open space facing over there in that easterly direction. And early in the Milky Way season, the Milky Way core rises directly over the top of this church. So that's gonna make a perfect composition. So what I decided to do was shoot three different compositions from this roughly this angle. And I'm gonna show you those in a minute. After that, I shot a star trail from over the other side, and we'll go through that a bit later on. So firstly, I'll explain my three single shot compositions. Okay, so for my first composition, I had the camera pretty much right there where this camera is now, facing towards the east with the Milky Way. Now the core was rising over the top of the church, and because the, the core looked like smoke above the building, I entitled this shot, Holy Smoke. Probably not very original, but anyway, that's what I thought. So anyway, what I want to show you today is all of these shots, except the star trail, are all single shot exposures. And I guess I want to show you that you don't have to do anything overly complicated to get a really good shot. In this case, I was using my Nikon D610 and my Nikon 14-24 f2.8. I had that lens set to 14mm, so it was very wide angle. My exposure was 20 seconds 
uh, at f2.8 and my ISO I set to 2500. So what I did during that single exposure, I did a little bit of light painting just from one side of the church over just behind these peppercorn trees and I was hiding in there because if I'm just doing one single exposure, I can't afford to get myself in the frame. You'll notice on a lot of my other videos where I'm shooting multiple exposures with the concept of blending them using layer masks in Photoshop, etc. I can rub myself out if I get in the frame. But when I'm just doing a single shot like this, it doesn't work. I can't rub myself out. It's very difficult to do. So I had to make sure I was out of the frame and at 14 millimeters, that's quite wide. There's not a whole lot of lighting on this foreground because I deliberately kept that dark because I wanted my attention to be just on the building and the Milky Way core above. I think it looks pretty good. Okay, now I mentioned a minute ago that I was actually hiding behind this tree to light paint the building. Once again, when it comes to light painting, I always like to get off on angles. I've discussed that with you many times before. Um, so I was at probably close to a 90 degree angle between where the camera position was and where the lighting was. And because I was able to hide behind this tree, it gave me, uh, I guess, the ability to, to conceal the light source. I remember shining the light up and it did hit some of these branches of this peppercorn tree which shows up in the final shot but I was able to to highlight the uh, the building quite nicely by doing that method. All right so for my next two shots I went back down here and hid just down the other side of this these steps leading up to the church. One of the things about this particular building is because it's painted with these white colored verticals and as well as uh, as you can see, the borders of this, these steps are painted white. They obviously flared a fair bit when you shone the light on them. So I had to be mindful of that, as opposed to the darker coloured stone um, sections of the church there, which didn't glow as much. But anyway, I set my camera up just down there, and I had a, a very similar composition to what I had in that previous shot, but I wanted to do something a little bit different with the lighting, so I'll explain that. Okay, so for my next shot, you'll notice my composition now includes this big tree over on top of the hill. And the reason I did that was because I wanted to actually highlight that tree. How did I do that? Well, I actually put a flash underneath the tree, shining straight up into the tree. And I had that set to fire at the end of my 20 second shutter speed. So I was shooting this at 14 millimeters at f2.8 and it was a 20 second shutter speed on my D7, uh, D610 with the 14 to 24 f2.8. I had the flash set to what's known as rear curtain sync. What that does, it makes the flash fire at the end of the 20 second shutter speed. And I had it set facing straight up, hidden by the ground, so you couldn't see the actual flash. You would only see the tree light up when I took that shot. That was my first composition here. And that worked out really well. I did a bit of light painting as well around the front here so you can see the steps leading up to the church and the church itself. Then I set my camera into portrait orientation and took a very similar shot just from here. So I got more of a front on view of the church. All of these shots have the Milky Way core overhead and that was my purpose and I love how they came out. So you can see the tree here that I was able to hide the light stand and the flash behind the trunk of the tree, which is what I would typically normally do. It's a big old, pretty ugly looking tree when you're close up to it. But you know, in the shot or in any of these shots at Nightscape, just giving a backlight adds so much dimension to my shot. And when I'm lighting trees, 
Typically, I don't light them from the front. I like to light them from underneath, and especially um, so the light is just hitting and kissing the side of all the branches and leaves, and that gives it that beautiful, um, I, I guess, that, that side light that, that looks good, uh, particularly similar to what you might get during um, golden hour at night time so for portraits. That's what I like to do, just give it that nice underneath backlight. Mm -hmm. So now we come to our star trail shot. And this is the angle that I shot, pretty much because that is facing due south. And I wanted to get the rotation of the star trails directly above the church here. And so to do that, all I needed to do was a compass or some, some app on my phone or whatever that will tell me exactly where due south is. Now, if you're in the Northern Hemisphere, you'd have to be looking due north. Uh, so that's what I did got the rotation. Now, what I decided to do was to shoot 19 two-minute exposures. That's right, two minutes, 120 seconds each. And during those 19 shots, I used probably four or five of them, and I walked around and light painted various angles around the building. So I lit this tree, and I lit the, the building itself, always from angles. So I'm never going to light paint from the same position as where the camera is. I'm going to go way over there to the left, way over there to the right. I'm going to do it the same when it doesn't matter what the subject matter is. I like to wrap the lights around the side. And then what another thing I did for this particular shot was I went around the back of the building and shone my torch, and I only lit, used my flashlight, my little torch, to light paint this whole thing. I went around the back of the building and shone the torch through some of those stained glass windows, and that actually made them glow from the other side. So where the camera is here, you could see the glow of the windows, and that looks pretty good just by itself as a single shot. Now, I'm sure you're probably wondering why I actually shot 19 images. And the answer is, I have no idea. Maybe I thought I was shooting 20. It doesn't matter. I could have shot 10, I could have shot 15, I could have shot 30. When you're doing star trials, it doesn't matter because the, the stars just keep on trailing. It doesn't matter how many shots you take. But with my 19 and my little bit of light painting, I was actually wrapped with how that one came up. Well, as you can see, the stained glass windows in this building have certainly seen better days. But you know, when I mentioned to you before about shining a light through the window, sometimes things like that, the techniques to do that come by accident. You know, I was here another time with two other people and I was around the front there just setting up and someone was around the back here looking at the building and they happened to shine their light up through this side. And I noticed that when they did that, I could actually see the silhouette of the light reflecting inside coming out through the light, uh, the windows at the front. So I thought, well, let's use that. Let's take advantage of any technique that we can come across. And sometimes these things happen by sheer accident. All right, so you can see that this is a great subject to shoot nightscape images. And I wanted to illustrate to you guys that I don't always shoot multiple images with complex blending and layering techniques. Sometimes you can capture great shots in just one single exposure, as I've demonstrated here at this beautiful location today. And so there you have it, another awesome subject for nightscape images. You know, I say this all the time, but these things are everywhere all around the landscape. No matter where you live, I'm sure there's beautiful old buildings like this just waiting to be shot under the stars. 
All right, well, I'd love to hear whatever comments or suggestions uh, you may have down below in the comments section, and I'm happy to answer and chat and talk. Always love to do that. And if you want to subscribe to the channel, love to have you on board. All you need to do is press the, uh, the bell icon down below, and I'll notify you whenever a new video comes out. Um, I'm on a bit of a holiday after today, so I may miss a week or so, uh, because I can't be in two places at once uh, and I haven't had a real holiday for a while. So in the meantime, I hope you guys enjoy yourselves out under the stars looking for great locations like this one and I'll see you guys in the next episode coming not too far away. See you then. <music>